Have you ever been given that piece of advice that to be successful, you need to find out what you're passionate about and build a life around that? I know I have, and I've had some surprising results in taking that advice to heart, which is why I'd like to share with you a tale of two jobs. Two jobs which, although vastly different from one another, serve to illustrate an important lesson I've learned over the course of my career journey so far. But before I share these stories with you, I wanna give you a little bit of context. Because what makes a story work is context. As a young boy growing up here in Montreal, I always had this dream of being a doctor. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. The Canadian-born son of Asian immigrants wants to become a doctor. Not very original or unique. But I want you to stick with me here, because in my case, this dream was not the product of my parents' ambitions for my future. Rather, this was a reflection of the passions I had at a very young age for the fields of medicine and science. Unfortunately, as I grew older, I realized that medical school is not for me. And so I shifted my focus to medical science, graduating from McGill University's Department of Medicine with a Master of Science degree in pathology. And this leads us to the tale of the first job that I want to share, a job which in many ways allowed me to live that dream of treating patients, not as a doctor, but as a clinical embryologist working at the IVF clinic at the Royal Victoria Hospital. Now, I have to start off here by admitting that this job did come with a delightful perk in that when my wife would drag me to one of her office parties and someone inevitably would ask me, so what do you do for a living? I'd look them right in the eye and I'd say, I make babies. <laughs> now, the typical response tended to be this uncertain nod, followed by a response along lines of, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to go over there. <laughs> I always got a kick out of that. Uh, my wife, on the other hand, not so much. But all kidding aside, this is pretty much what I did in this job. I worked in an OR at the hospital with doctors and nurses treating couples with infertility issues to have a baby. And for someone who has a little boy dreamed of being a doctor, this would certainly seem like a dream become true. And yet, this was one of the least enjoyable jobs I did over the course of my career. Isn't that odd? I mean, here I had this passion for treating patients, which is exactly what I was doing in this job. And yet there were days where I dreaded going to work because it felt like just that, work. What was I missing here? Why would work that was connected to my passions leave me feeling dissatisfied and at times unhappy? Before I can answer that question, allow me to share with you the tale of the second job I did, which, as you'll see, differs greatly from the previous one in many ways. For starters, this wasn't one of my career jobs. It was a summer job that my uncle got for me working in a pharmaceutical dispensary in a medical building in a suburb of Toronto. And unlike the previous one, this second job was far from exciting as most of my work was done in their basement warehouse. Now, can you imagine spending your summer taking inventory, writing out purchase orders in a windowless basement? Sounds pretty bleak, doesn't it? And yet to this day, it remains one of the jobs that I remember with much fondness because it rarely felt like work. In fact, I remember on Sunday nights of getting excited because I was going to work the next day. Can you imagine that? A 17-year-old teenage boy being excited to go to work in a basement warehouse all day during summer. Pretty crazy, right? So what's going on here? Why would what should have been a dream job turned out to be only a job. And a summer job which should have been nothing more than a paycheck be an experience that I still recall with much fondness. Well, what I've come to learn from these two jobs as well as from my other work experiences is that while I was passionate about the work I did at the hospital, I was missing an important ingredient. I was missing the real spice of life that gives us joy, happiness, and the ability to thrive. And that missing ingredient 
was purpose. Now, I know what some of you must be thinking. How can helping couples start a family leave me feeling like I was working without purpose? Well, the reason for that was simple. For our boss, our success was not determined by whether our patient had a baby in the end, but by the number of embryos that remained viable three weeks after implantation. Once this test was done, it didn't matter in terms of our performance whether a baby was born or not. But what about that summer job in that basement warehouse? What sense of purpose could a 17-year-old teenager possibly find in such unremarkable work? Well, the answer to that comes in a conversation I had with the owner, Mr. Hainsworth. After a few weeks on the job, Mr. Hainsworth took me aside and he asked me what I thought my job was. I told him my job was simply to make sure that the shelves remained stocked and that we didn't run out of inventory. Mr. Hainsworth looked at me and said, I don't think you understand what we do here. Our job is not to simply fill out prescriptions. Our job is to make sure that every single person that walks through those doors knows that all of us are here to help them get better so they can enjoy their lives. And that includes you and the work you do. Now, the reason why I wanted to share these two stories is because they illustrate an important lesson I've learned over the course of my career of what it really takes to succeed and live the life we were meant to live. And that lesson is this. Passion without purpose is a lost opportunity for us to do something meaningful, something enduring, and perhaps something extraordinary. Of course, when it comes to doing purpose-led work, many of us mistakenly assume that it has to be glamorous or exciting. But as I demonstrate in these two personal stories of mine, as well as what researchers looking into what drives our motivations at work have found, is that our sense of purpose is not simply derived from what we do, but from how we choose to view what we do. So with this in mind, how do we use purpose, the real spice of life, to help us live the lives we were meant to live? To help you with this journey, I wanna share with you the three steps that I have taken that have helped me to find that sense of purpose in the work I do today. And the first step that we need to take is we need to create a vision that is bigger than ourselves. And one of my favorite stories that helps to illustrate this is about a group of visitors who are touring the NASA facilities during the Apollo space program. And they see this man in a lab coat walking down a corridor, and they ask him, what do you do here at NASA? And the man replies, I'm helping to put a man on the moon. Now what these visitors didn't know was that he wasn't one of the scientists. He was the janitor. This story reflects what Mr. Hainsworth told me about my role in his company that I was helping to improve the health of these patients and consequently, the quality of life they had. It's hard not to feel like you're part of something bigger than yourself when you understand the impact of your contributions. The second step that we need to take is when defining goals, we need to answer the question, why does this matter? This was the critical question that went unanswered in my work at the hospital. Given how my boss only cared about implantation rates, a patient could lose the baby three months in and we'd still call it a success. But if we're not helping our patients to fulfill their dreams, how can this success matter? While my boss at the hospital never understood this, Mr. Hainsworth certainly did, which is why I was so driven to bring my best to work every day. And finally, the last step that we need to take is we need to tap into our real strengths. Now, all of us can appreciate that to be successful, we need to focus on building on our strengths. The problem is many of us confuse our strengths as being the things we're good at. The reality, though, is that our real strengths are the things that strengthen us. They're the things that challenge us to rise up and be that better version of who we can be and of what we can truly achieve. Many times when we talk about successful people, it's often noted 
how passionate they are about what they're doing and what they hope to achieve. And this is why so many of us believe that the key to our own success is by simply following our passions. But the truth is, is that our passion should serve as a reflection of the sense of purpose we derive from the work we do and from the life we choose to live. Nelson Mandela, someone who I often refer to as an example of true leadership, once wrote, there is no passion to be found in playing small, in settling for a life that is less than the one that you are capable of living. This quote reminds me of what I learned from working for Mr. Hainsworth, of how the power exists in all of us to make a difference to matter in what we do by not settling for less than what we're capable of doing and of who we can be. This is something that all of us have the potential to do when we realize that the real ingredient for success, prosperity, and happiness is not simply passion, but finding purpose in what we do and in the lives we choose to live. Thank you.